Hello everyone and uh, let's proceed with this video lecture. In this video lecture you will be learning about induced electric field. So uh, this electric field is going to be different from the earlier one that you have gone through because of a point charge or charge distributions that called electrostatic. So let's try to learn this origin first then we will compare in the two fields. Let's say uh, there is a magnetic field which is varying over the time and uh, that is uniformly uh, distributed. So this is a uniform magnetic field D and that's into this plane and what is the characteristic of B? B is uniform. When we say it's a uniform that means it is same at all the locations wherever it is but it is uh, variable but it is time varying it is time varying when we say time varying that means it is not constant so it's a non it's a uniform and variable magnetic field that we are having so we will write it as a b is basically a function of time so it, it may be increasing over the time may be decreasing over the time but at all the locations its value will be same at the same time and in that magnetic field let's say we have placed a conducting loop so this is a conducting loop so it has to be made made of some metal or materials uh, which is conducting in nature and it must be in the form of loop that means closed. Then as per the Faraday's law and Lenz's law we have understood that this gets a current. Let's assume this uh, magnetic field that is time varying is increasing over the time so that is let's say increasing in nature. If we know that this is increasing in nature we can easily identify where the current is going to go. So this magnetic field is increasing inwards so to oppose this flux so flux will be increasing in this direction and uh, as per the Lenz law this will be opposed so induced flux must be coming outwards so induced magnetic field will be coming outwards hence induced current must be in such a way so that this becomes a magnetic field and if we are interested for this magnetic field then we know the current must be in this direction. So you'll find this conducting loop will get a current. This current is induced current and this is coming as per the uh, this Faraday's law. And moreover we also know what this value is going to be. This value is calculated by EMF induced EMF which is minus d5 by dt and d divided by resistance that becomes a current. Now let's try to understand how, why this conducting loop allowed the current uh, if we are changing the magnetic field. Generally any conductor that we know so far is uh, having a current when there is a battery or some potential difference is being applied, isn't it? And here we are not applying any battery or potential difference, we are simply changing the magnetic field. So you can correct this because this changing magnetic field is basically creating this EMF that's a battery or potential and this will cause the current. Then we need to see how this uh, EMF is coming in. So uh, from the very basic we start with this is a conductor so this conductor will going to have a free electrons. Now these free electrons are uh, random moving but in nutshell they are not moving in any conductor. So since they are not moving uh, in nutshell so you will find net force because of magnetic field is going to be zero and force of magnetic field acts only if these charged particles are moving. So you will find this uh, magnetic field force will not be able to move these electrons to create this current. So uh, which field can move these electrons? So electrons are charged and charge can be moved by electric field. So there must be electric field coming in and that electric field will be applying a force. So purpose is or a final idea is uh, that uh, we need to get this current. If we want this current then this electrons, these electrons must be moving. And these electrons must be moving in the direction like this so that we can get the current in this direction because we know the current is opposite to the direction of electron motion. If we want these electrons to move like this that means there must be electrostat there, there, there must be force on this electron uh, in this direction and this force can be applied by a field called electric field. 
since this is a negative that means the field must be in this direction so you will find there exists a field in this direction and that electric field is coming because of the varying magnetic field if you stop magnetic field variation then you will find this current will stop that means this force will stop that means this field will stop so that means the origin of this field is the time varying magnetic field so this field is called induced electric field right and this will be in the direction in which the induced currents come in moreover uh, since this these electrons has to be continuously moving so this electric field will be in this form that means it will be in the form of closed loop tangential on that loop so it will be in the form of closed loop so we can claim from here that what is the induced electric field this is an electric field which is coming because of the time varying magnetic field it is not because of the charge so let me complete this point uh, induced electric field or we say whatever the EVR over able to see here this is called induced electric field induced electric field and we can also write its properties and uh, this field is created by created by magnetic field which varies as a function of time and not by and not due to charge or by charge so we can say this is not due to charge it is because of changing magnetic field so you'll find changing magnetic field creates electric field that electric field is known as induced electric field this is also called non electrostatic in nature so this is non electrostatic that means this is not the same field as you have understood in the electrostatic ch chapter because that was electrostatic electrostatic is a field that is coming because of stationary charges moreover this field is uh, non conservative in nature so it's non conservative these are the properties you must be remembering this is non conservative conservative in nature and if it is non conservative in nature that means we can claim something from here uh, that uh, if if a field is non conservative in nature that means in a closed loop the work done is non zero so if you do the if you find the work done by this field in a closed loop you will find it's going to be non zero secondly this is not going to store energy that means we cannot define potential energy hence we cannot define potential so we can say so potential corresponding to this in field is not defined not defined so if somebody asks what is the potential because of induced electric field our answer will be it will not be defined at all because of the reason it is uh, non conservative in nature and uh, another important point or the difference uh, from this electrostatic is that its field lines are closed curve unlike the case of electrostatic so these are this has a field lines field lines as closed curve that means they do not originate from any point neither they terminate at it in any point which was the property of electrostatic field lines so some of the important point which makes it different from the electrostatic must be kept in mind those points are uh, this is non electrostatic nature this is produced by time varying magnetic field this is not produced by charge this is non conservative in nature potential cannot be defined corresponding to this field and its field lines are in the form of closed curve so just like you see this these arrows are showing the field lines or if we are uh, field directions these arrows are showing field directions if we want to plot the field lines so how the field lines are going to look like you will find the field lines going to look like some sort of this they will be concentric circular in nature so by this color i am trying to plot the 
electric field lines due to a uh, time varying magnetic field in these field lines you need to remember so in case of uh, this you will find this kind of field lines are going to be there and not only on this space even in outer space they are going to be there and you will find they will be in circular what will be the direction you can measure those directions by uh, using the direction of induced current so this these are field lines and we will show this kind of arrow so you can see these field lines are in the form of closed loops so they are not originating or terminating which is very different from this electrostatic in nature and the, the, those field used to be uh, in in the form of uh, uh, open uh, loops or or open lines that used to initiate and terminate or originate and terminate at any point let's say you are interested to find the field direction at this so you need to simply draw a tangent in this tangent then in this sense of this arrow you will be designing like this this is the direction of field similarly here this is going to be the direction of field similarly here it is going to be the direction of field so that means direction of field can be found out using the tangent on the uh, field line that 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 are the property of field lines and all those properties will be valid like they are not going to intersect and there will be uh, tangent will give you the direction and uh, density will let you know uh, magnitude of uh, induced electric field right but difference is that they are in the form of closed curve and this is non conservative and potential cannot be defined so these are the critical points you need to keep in mind and these field lines are very very important fine so that is about uh, induced electric field its generation and it is hidden in the faraday's law and we can also find out its direction in any time varying magnetic field just by looking the direction of current now we got to know uh, this field's direction now purpose would be to find out its magnitude as well so how to get the magnitude let's talk about that as well. so let's uh, find this electric field which is induced one this is induced electric field that we are looking at and uh, we need to find at a distance r from its axis which axis cylindrical region so there is a cylindrical region so that this is the boundary of cylinder and uh, this this is the axis axis is coming outside and going inside so this is cross sectional view and this magnetic field is uh, existing in the direction of axis so along the axis rather and it's into in this particular situation and let's say this magnetic field increases over the time this is how it is given so let's say this is increases so we need to find uh, induced electric field in entire region that means at any distance so whenever this kind of boundary you get this is capital r boundary so we need to find at any point which is inside as well as at any point which is outside so we are getting formula for inside and outside that means we are covering all the points uh, that means at a distance r from the axis and this is center point is going to be have like axis so how we are going to find this induced electric field that's a point so uh, we will use the faraday's law so what is the faraday's law let me recall you this faraday's law this faraday's law is written as induced emf is equal to uh, minus d phi by dt where phi is flux of magnetic field so that's called magnetic flux but uh, you also know that this emf is defined as the work done per unit charge so when we define this emf as a work done per unit charge and this work done by some uh, field that's electric field is going to do some work done and what is that work done by electric field it's going to be a force which is qe that's electric force dot displacement that is dr or dl divided by q so you will find this q is a constant which can be taken out and it can be uh, cancelled out as well so it's going to be integration e dot dl so this is the definition of emf as well so you'll find the definition of emf is equal to integration e dot dl and as per the faraday's law emf has been defined as minus d phi by dt so we can equate the two together when we equate the two together then you'll find it's going to be integration e dot dl 
is equal to minus d phi b by dt phi b means flux because of magnetic field not because of electric field moreover you'll find uh, when you are doing this uh, faraday's law applying on a closed loop so that integration has to be performed on the closed loop right so this is going to be on the closed loop that's why we are going to place this symbol so we will write this faraday's law in this form as well so this is also known as the faraday's law if we place the value of emf on this All right now we can use this uh, faraday's law that's a faraday's law and uh, we can use this faraday's law to find out the field e this e is uh, induced electric field and uh, this flux is of magnetic field so this equation basically trying to tell us that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux there is going to be e so that means this e is being created by magnetic flux that means magnetic field that means change in magnetic field to be precise so uh, this equation equation is very very important in, in entire physics so how to find this e out of this again the situation is a bit complex because this e is inside that we need to find out so uh, we need to take uh, some loop on which on that on the loop in which we are going to perform this and then in that loop we will take dl then we will find the direction of e we have understood what is the direction of e is if we know magnetic field is increasing or decreasing we can find the current induced current direction set same will be the direction of e so direction of e is known to us dl we can choose and uh, then we can go for this uh, dot product then we can integrate it for the entire loop entire loop that's so this is entire loop integration and on the right hand side we will be simply writing the flux passing through a rate of change of flux with a minus sign and then simplification will lead to uh, our e value of course you have learned this mf gauss law and ampere's law you have understood that if we want to bring this out from this expression then there has to be symmetry so that e remains constant and we can take this e outside right so now we will be using this expression to find out the e out of this expression in in a different case let's say this is a case that we are considering so here we will be saying that okay let's we need to find this so we are doing in this manner that means inside part as well as outside so what will be inside the expression for this electric field when we say inside that means we are basically saying r is less than capital r that means we are talking about the in inside this point somewhere here so if we are at a distance r from here so we need to take a uh, boundary or a loop we need to consider a loop so that we can perform this on that loop so let me draw a picture for that so uh, we can say this is the picture and uh, here uh, this is r distance so we consider this as a loop if you consider this as a loop and magnetic field is increasing so the direction of induced uh, field is going to be this at all the locations and this is the direction of this you can take the dl along this so if we take a dl at any location you'll find that dl is going to be parallel to parallel to uh, this e so uh, what this expression will become let me solve here we will say as per the uh, faraday's law it will become e dot dl so it will be e dl cos 0 because dl and e they are parallel dl is a tangential e is a tangential what we have chosen this this is a simply a loop this is not a conducting loop you can place a conducting loop or any arbitrary hypothetical loop you can think of which is at radius a circular loop this is going to be equal to minus d upon dt of flux how much the flux will be passing through this loop that the loop we have considered can we, can we find it out yes we can easily find it out it's going to be magnetic field whatever it is into area flux flux is going to be b into a because uh, uh, direction of a is going to be perpendicular and b is also perpendicular so both are in the parallel direction so this is going to be b into a area is going to be equal to pi r square so we need to use that area which is in inside that loop make sense now then after you can do this like uh, this this can be said that e is a uniform on this entire uh, circular loop so you'll find e can be taken outside 
cos 0 is 1 so integration is this is of dl dl is a length so you are going to add entire length on this entire periphery this is going to be equal to minus pi is a constant r is a constant so it will be db by dt now b is going to give given to you as a function of time so whatever this expression is given to you you can just differentiate it so dv by dt it will be there moreover then you can write this left hand side for the simplified manner this integration dl will lead to twice pi r smaller the this is integration on this loop okay so this will become equal to minus pi r square db by dt from here we are getting one expression that this electric field is going to be equal to uh, pi is getting cancelled out 1 r is getting cancelled out minus r by 2 r by 2 db by dt So this will be the expression for electric field which is induced electric field due to magnetic field and that will be for the reason which is inside that boundary or that cylindrical zone. So this is an important expression and this is going to give us the magnitude direction we have already calculated or shown here then that's done that that means it, it, it says all about the induced electric field this minus we need to keep it and uh, it might be like db by dt will carry a minus sign or something like that ultimately whatever it is coming we need to write a positive value because this is a magnitude so magnitude has to be positive so from here we will calculate the magnitude and from uh, direction of uh, current or uh, using the lens law we will be finding the direction of induced field fine so this is for the inside point now let's find out uh, the expression for induced electric field for outside region when we say outside that means this is the reason when r is greater than capital r meaning is that beyond that cylindrical region and this magnetic field is only between this boundary outside magnetic field is zero so this is only within that cylindrical region and we are now interested in finding out the expression for induced electric field outside so let's say we are choosing this point so, or, or maybe this point and if we are interested at this point so we need to join this that's a radius r and then we need to consider this loop circular loop symmetrically so that's the loop that we are considering and we know uh, the electric field is going to be tangential on this loop so that's a tangential just like earlier case so outside also electric field exists it's not only that inside electric field exists it's also exists outside and then we need to take dl at any location so if we take dl then you'll find the dl and uh, this e they are going to be in parallel because they are uh, tangential both are tangential so again we can use that faraday's law and it will be written as integration e dot dl which will become e dl cos zero is equal to minus d phi by dt d phi by dt so we need to find the flux of magnetic field because uh, from this region or this loop now let's just simplify this left hand side can be written as e into integration of dl which is going to be 2 pi r i'm doing it quickly because this is the same expression that we did uh, for the inside one however on the right hand side you are going to get as a minus d phi by dt into b into area now in this area is going to be existing a non-zero b in this area you'll find b is uh, zero so you'll find uh, this area will not play any role in magnetic flux so it's going to be only pi capital r square so from here you will be finding this can be simplified as minus pi capital r square db by dt after simplification you got to know this e is going to be equal to minus r square divided by twice r db by dt so this becomes the expression for induced electric field in the case of outside the cylindrical region this capital r is the boundary of that cylindrical region is small r is the distance and this is how it, it goes so we have got for inside one as well as for outside one then we can easily plot the graph the graph between e and r which is very popular how this induced field varies over the distance from the center and let's say we are talking about the magnitude of it so that's the mod of e we are talking about so that it's remain positive and this is r of course you need to create a boundary which is uh, this capital r and there are two regions that's the inside one that's outside one 
if you remember the inside one it was directly proportional to r so it's going to be directly proportional to r straight line and uh, this is inversely proportional to r so it's going to reduce to zero after long time so this is how it's going to be this is inside one that's the outside one inside one uh, let me write if you uh, want to connect with this inside this was minus r by 2 db by dt so this db by dt is uh, not going to be function of r because b is a uniform so b is same at all r distance so it's only function of r so it's a straight line so that's important graph that will let you know how this induced electric field varies in case of magnetic field varies over the time okay so that's an important point and you need to draw this graph let's consider one example in which we can you see the application of induced uh, electric field so this is to find the induced emf between two ends a and b of a conducting rod so there's a conducting rod a b that has been placed like this so this is a conducting rod and uh, the time varying magnetic field exists there so that's a time magnetic uh, time varying magnetic field it's a b naught into t and uh, this is a circular boundary of radius r where the magnetic field varies and outside the magnetic field is zero so that's a situation right now what we need to do now is uh, we need to solve this right so we can solve it so there can be uh, two different ways to solve it one i'm going to explain another i'm going to use so uh, let's say uh, this is a conducting rod so that they, it will have a free electrons right and if some electric field comes in so that electric field can separate these electrons hence emf will be generated and since it's increasing so we have already understood that the electric field is going to be induced which is going to be in circular closed curve form like this you'll find so right so you'll find uh, the the electric field will be existing at the location where this conducting rod is replaced so here the electric field will be like this at this point electric field will be like this and similarly here the electric field will be like this now you see these are the electric field direction if you can see properly then there are electrons so in electrons there will be force opposite to this in all case you'll find in nut cell an electric field will be existing like this because this will have the component here this will also have a component here this will also have a component in this direction so a nut electric nut cell electric field on this conducting rod will be acting like this and if this is a field so electron will be experiencing a force like this so these electrons will come here and this will become positive charge center so there will be negative charge center and positive charge center that means there will be a potential difference coming in right and uh, what we have understood so far that we can find out what is the electric field is and as well as its direction what is the electric field this is the region uh, which we are talking about is the internal region inside region so it's going to be minus r by 2 db by dt now db by dt is very simple it's going to be b naught and r that means we need to find the distance so this is r now what you can do is take a sample uh, of dx length and find this e direction and take this dx and go for the formula right so let me make uh, this simplified version what we can do is this that means you can uh, take any element at a distance r from theta or from measuring this x think about this dx in this the field will be in this direction and dx or dl will be in the direction of length then e expression we know that's the internal point or inside point of this region then we can go for the dot product of these two quantities based on this theta angle and then we can uh, write the e expression then integrate dl from a to b you will get your answer so this one method is going to be using this thing that means emf is going to be equal to integration e dot e dot dl and it has to be performed from a point to b point understood and we got to know how to write e we got to know how to write dl we got to know how to do this dot then how to do this integration it will take a little bit time and because it's a calculative and you can perform this once you perform this you will get your answer and uh, that means it describes how this emf is being generated on the road it is because of induced electric field another way of doing the same problem could be this that uh, we can join this with this 
boundary point we can join this with this boundary point and we can call it as a o so we can consider a loop so there is a loop we can see and that loop is o a b then again back to o so this is the loop that we are talking about now when once there is a loop we can apply the faraday's law so in this loop we are going to apply the faraday's law that means loop integration e dot dl loop integration e dot dl this must be equal to minus d phi by dt and this phi is of magnetic so i'm writing b now this is applicable only on the loop on this a to b segment we cannot apply this law because uh, this is true for the loop okay now when we do this loop integration then you'll find this can be divided into fragments like it's for oa part e, e dot dl plus this integration for uh, ab part e dot dl then this integration for bo part e dot dl so it's like uh, we are writing these limits in parts and that will become equal to minus d phi by dt so d upon dt of flux how much the flux will be passing through magnetic field is given to us and uh, from this loop we need to find the flux through this loop so we will write the area and the magnetic field that's all so we are going to write this area and the magnetic field they are parallel so cos 0 cos 0 will be 1 now more important point here to understand is this part so let's try to find this oa segment so if we are in this oa segment for integration then you will be feeling that oa segment will take this integration so dl will be along this line and we have already understood these uh, field lines here the field lines are going to be circular which field lines Elect uh, these electric field lines now these circular electric field lines will be uh, helping us to uh, in, in performing this dot product so this is going to be the direction of e so at at if we take the dl along this field is going to be along this so field is tangentially which is perpendicular to the radial direction similarly here the field is going to be perpendicular to the radial direction so that's going to be field which is perpendicular to the radial here also the field will be perpendicular to the radial making sense so since e and dl is going to be perpendicular for the radial case then you'll find this term will become zero why because perpendicular vectors dot product is zero similarly this term will also become zero because this is a perpendicular bo is a radial direction so b o is a radial direction so in radial direction you'll find e will be perpendicular a b is not a radial so in a b it's not going to be zero but uh, o a is also a radial so in o a radial direction there is no potential difference or emf is coming in if you got it then we are almost there so it becomes basically integration from a to b a to b e dot dl this is what we need to perform and one way we have talked to perform this directly by like writing e writing dl here there is no need to write e and dl and this came out to be equal to this number area is a constant so you can take this area outside and d upon dt of b b is a b naught t differentiation of b naught t will remain b naught because t will become one so it becomes minus a what is area of this triangle you can find the area of this triangle as a half base base is given as l into height height is given as a d so that's area into b naught so that's our answer so we can say this emf that we were looking for which is from integration from a to b e dot dl this is coming as b naught l d by 2 and you can place this minus this minus is coming and this minus is saying that this is going to oppose the cause that is created so if you need to talk about the magnitude you say b naught l d by 2 or you can simply place this minus to find this e expression so well this is how we have solved this uh, uh, emf or potential difference you can call in loose sense but actually it's a emf across point a and b and this is this answer the same you can uh, verify by doing this expression or solving this expression write the e expression that we have understood dl then dot then integration you will get the same expression if you are able to get the same expression doing this that will be a, a, a big achievement that means you will be stronger in doing the calculations okay 
So uh, this was one example. So there can be several examples uh, similar like this. Uh, the important point that you can catch from this that in the radial direction, if you do this E dot DL or try to calculate this induced EMF, you will find that will be zero. So and this is how we can create a loop because this will be zero, this will be zero. So whatever the loop will get, it, it will be only because of this rod. Fine. So uh, that's all for this video. In this video, you have just understood uh, induced electric field and its application and its formula. Well, so make your notes proper. And if there's any query or question, you can ask. Thank you for watching.